Welcome back to our big story that is breaking today on NDTV, which is the crackdown by police in Maharashtra on activists and human rights defenders across the country. Close to nine of them have been raided. Some of them have been arrested and it is drawing strong reactions across the board. Let me just go across uh, to the writer, historian, scholar Ram Chandra Guha, who joins me from Bengaluru, someone who has also come out quite strongly in critique of these arrests. Now, Ram, you've described in your tweet as chilling these arrests that have been taking place since the morning. Hello? Yeah. Uh, Hello, I just lost him. I just lost you. Ram, uh, can you... Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me now? Vasu here. I can hear you, I can hear you now. I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Ram, uh, so I was just asking you that uh, you described uh, these arrests since the morning as chilling. Yes. Now, what is it about? Yeah. What is it about these arrests that that is that that is causing you concern? You know, I know some of these people. I know. Uh, some of them personally, I know of their work, uh, the others, I often disagree with them on issues, uh, but none, uh, as far as I know, the ones I know who are Anil Teltunde, Sudha Bhardwaj, Gautam Navlaka have never themselves preached or practiced violence. In fact, Sudha Bhardwaj is a brave and heroic defender of the human rights of Dalits and Adivasis. This is a brutal, oppressive, authoritarian, arbitrary, illegal act by the Maharashtra police. And it is absolutely chilling and awful. I'd like to read out to you uh, something that in, uh, Indira Jaisik has just put out. Yes. And please bear with me. It'll take one minute. Let me read it out. Sure. Susan, Shoma, and Sudha. These are three of the arrested lawyers and activists. Susan, Shoma, and Sudha are all mothers bringing up their children, sons, and daughters peacefully. They are all professional working women, law-abiding citizens who uphold our constitutional morality. Today, they are either behind bars or are witnessing their homes invaded by the state. And then Indira goes on. Why? What's their crime? To represent the country's Dalits, Muslims, Adivasis, women, the disenfranchised and dispossessed question mark. Now, Indira has hit the nail on the head. These are people who represent the country's disenfranchised and disadvantaged. I don't always agree with their ideas. I don't agree sometimes with what they say. But they are all doing so constitutionally through the rule of law. And it's not accidental that these are lawyers. Because the state and their corporate cronies, I say this uh, uh, advisedly, the corporate cronies of the ruling government hmm. who are grabbing Adivasi lands, forests, and mineral resources for their own personal profit, the profit of the political party and the industrialists, want to have those dispossessed unrepresented in the courts. This is what is happening in the Adivasi heartland of India is akin to what the white colonists in North America do to the Native Americans. It is murder, rape, physical, natural, social. And it, these are the lawyers who are defending the dispossessed. Now, I'd just like to say one last thing. Yes. So that it's absolutely clear where I stand. Okay. The ruling government, that is the BJP government in states like Chhattisgarh has taken and Jharkhand has taken it further. But the Congress was almost as guilty. Hmm. Chidambaram started the witch hunt of activists where he was home minister. This government has taken it a step further. You know, where Indira Gandhi shows a path, Modi and Shah, Oh, widen the path and make it an eight-lane highway. So yes. that's really what is happening. Yes. These are the women and activists who are uh, lawyers who are defending the dispossessed and disenfranchised. They, would, they do not want those people to have any representation, legal representation in the district courts and the high courts. They also persecute journalists, kick them out of places like Buster. And it's absolutely mandatory that the Supreme Court now show some courage and some spine. Well, because in fact, this is an yeah. attempt through these arbitrary arrests to derail the whole legal process. Right. No, you're, you're right when you say that this is a legacy that goes back to the Congress because it was Manmohan Singh, as you'll recall, who said that Naxals present the greatest threat. And it was during the Congress time that they launched what was called Operation Green Hunt. Now, what is concerning here, Ram, is that a lot of these activists today, from what we understand, 
and the Pune police has been fairly vague with the charges. But from what we understand, they're all being booked under very strong provisions of essentially uh, what are the anti-terror laws, you know, the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. But again, it's, it's very vague. It's not clear exactly what exactly the police has found that is actually leading them to, to invoke that law and to make these arrests. Uh, Vasu, again, before I uh, 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 give you an explanation as to why the police is acting, why it does, I want to make, some, make something clear from my side. Yes. I detest the Naxalites. I think they are a threat to Indian democracy. Naxalites and the Bajrang Dal are on the same page as me, as right. violent brutes. Right. But the people who are being harassed are those who are defending Adivasis, Dalits, women, landless. Yes. Uh, against the rapacious loot of their resources and homes by corporate interests, aided by the political class. Agree now, why you. is the police being arbitrary vague to intimidate, to threaten, to take Sudha Bhardwaj and take her out of the house when her young daughter is there, to do the same to uh, Shoma Sen, to do it to somebody else in front of their students, right. to intimidate, our, you see, because under our punitive uh, uh, sections of the law, which are a colonial legacy, you can just pick up someone, it'll be weeks before they're produced in bail, uh, in court, it may be months before they get bail, yes. which is why it is absolutely vital that the Supreme Court intervene, send a strong message to uh, the police across the country that this is authoritarian, arbitrary, colonial, and chilling. It is completely antithetical to our democracy. And the reason is they're doing it like this, the police, is to threaten and intimidate. So yeah. no young lawyer, Sudha Bhardwaj is one of the most admired law teachers in the National Law School in Delhi. Yes. Her students adore her. But if a young girl or a young boy wanting to become a lawyer, sees a brave, upright, middle-aged woman dragged out of her home in front of her daughter yes. uh, on these arbitrary and cooked-up charges, she'll have, that young lawyer uh, will have second or third thoughts before representing Adivasis and Dalits. Yes. That is the game plan here. No, I, I agree with you, by the way. I completely agree with you, uh, your view on Naxals. And I see the distinction you're making between these activists who you say are fighting for rights, for human rights within a constitutional network a structure and others who are not. Uh, but I want to ask you, Ram, when you talk of the Supreme Court, now, of course, there is an immediate attempt being made by several of uh, members of the legal community to move the courts to try and see if they can actually prevent these arrests. And perhaps there would be some sort of longer attempt intervention in the courts to try and see how to check this. But what else do you think can we do? Outside of the law, outside so of the court, or is that really the only recourse? Of outside of the law, outside of the law, we must set aside our political differences to safeguard constitutional rights. I am glad Arundhati Roy has spoken out. I salute her. I have disagreed with her in the past, but yes. on this, I am on the same side as her. Likewise with other people. When it comes to such arbitrary seizures and arrests and harassment of working women. I mean, the way Indira put it, they want to intimidate Shoma and Sudha will, and Susan will not be intimidated. But young people will be nervous about following their path. Their mm. parents will tell them, Aisa mat karo, Chhattisgarh mein mat jao, join a corporate practice in Delhi, take the safe route out. So what is, this is happening is, particularly outside Delhi. You see, in Delhi, the Delhi High Court is reasonably progressive. Yes. But other state high courts are not so. You know, uh, who knows what happens in Nagpur or Bilaspur or Bhuvaneshwar. Yeah. And uh, the circumstances for a lawyer there are so difficult. And they want to make it even more difficult. What they want what? to do is in the vast Indian heartland, particularly where there are valuable natural resources, which are corporate class covets, and which are currently have always been held by Adivasis, they want to make open the door and they want due process to be totally aborted. Right. Because these people like Sudha Bhardwaj, are uh, almost the only people, actually let me make one last point, Vasu is very important. Yeah. People like Sudha Bhardwaj are almost the only professionals standing between dispossession and, uh, you know, uh, and security. Because the MLAs are totally sold out of both parties. The, right. journal, the local journalists are scared and compromised. They're not like Vasu in Delhi or Ram in Bangalore who can speak out. You know, the Ra Raman Singh, you know, Raman Singh runs a total police state in Chhattisgarh. Journalists, they cannot speak out. I mean, and so people like Sudha or in the past, Shankar Guhan Yogi, who was murdered, as you will recall, yes. are the only English-speaking 
activists aware with the legal process who can use the courts and the media and the democratic process to fight for but the rights know, of Ram, the franchise. So yeah. they want to remove these people altogether because it'd be open season. Ram, you know, the, the last point I want to make, which has again been something that has really worried me through all this, is the role of the media, or at least a certain section of the media, in all of this. And, and we know what's been happening to the media over the past four years, but in this case, it's been particularly egregious because you've had one of these channels, which I won't name, uh, uh, you know, tonight uh, on uh, on NDTV, one of these channels runs some sort of completely, you know, un unbelievable letter, supposedly written by Sudha Bharadwaj about some sort of terror plot. Yeah. This is not a substantiated letter. There's no, there's no clear evidence to suggest where it has come from. She sends them a legal notice, they prevaricate, and then within sort of weeks of that, she's arrested. So it's, it's, this, it's this other aspect to this, which is also, you know, uh, uh, you know, worrying. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, these, see, for the, those news channels, so-called news channels, media outlets, cheerleader is too weak a word. I would like to appropriate the word coined by General V.K. Singh. The channel you, you refer to is a prostitute for the Modi Shah regime of brutality and oppression. That's what they are. They are, a, they are doing the hack work that paid channels and propagandist channels have done in totalitarian countries, which is why the ironical phrase North Korean channels used for them. But let's not, uh, you know, let's, uh, they are in some ways uh, not uh, a relatively minor player in this. It is the corporate interests and the political class sure. who are behind much of this. You know, uh, they are aiding it, they are abetting it, they are providing a gloss towards it, yeah. but they are not ultimately responsible for it. You know, it is the nexus between those who are likely to fund the BJP in the coming election right. uh, and the BJP itself uh, uh, that is behind the manic desire to remove, it, eliminate all intermediate levels of support and solidarity that the dispossessed of the Adivasi hardlands may right. uh, at the moment be able to call upon. Okay, well, uh, Ram, uh, just as a and general... And that's why all of us, yeah. regard, all of us, regardless of our political differences, yeah. may stand, must stand together on this. Okay, on that I agree with you. Only as a journalist, I, I uh, you know, shy away from using the term prostitute, even for, for media houses that you know, I would have a deep objection to in terms of their okay, ideology, in terms yeah. of the kind of propaganda yeah. they do. But uh, thanks very much indeed for uh, joining us. Thanks very much indeed.